Hey Chamber Music fans, Michelle Schumann here with the Austin Chamber Music Festival. I'm really happy to be here with Jonas Sirota. He's the violist uh, par extraordinaire of the uh, Chiara yeah. String Quartet. It's great to have him. He is uh, on the road right now. I think you're probably going to Greenwood right now, are yes. you? Or yeah. We're, we're headed over there where we teach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I was really lucky to kind of nab him as he's going cross country to New York, New York State, is it? Um, uh, to, yeah, Western Massachusetts. Uh -huh. Yeah, right now, right now I'm in a, a very, very fancy motel room. Nice. Outside nice. of Toledo. So it's really, these are really uh, fancy digs. <laughs> That's great. And it's nice that we squeezed it in because actually right after this, I'm going to the dentist. So, oh, nice. you know, yeah, isn't that nice? <laughs> so we met, I think it's been five years ago that we met. We met at, we were the first artists of the inaugural Fayetteville uh, Festival five years right. ago. So we yeah. just had such a great time. And I remember it was, it was kind of an interesting time because I had just taken over Austin Chamber Music um, Center. And we had had a lot of discussions about, like, having you guys come out, and it took us only five years to make that. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, in the in the arts world, that's not so that's not so right. slow, actually. Right. I mean, you know, there's there's grants to write, there's uh, brainstorming to do, and and um, you know, ideas to be had, and and then and then scheduling. So since everything's scheduled. Yeah. So great far in advance anyway. It's it's we're we're just really glad to be coming out. Yeah. Well and we had such a great time playing together at that festival. And I knew that we would we would work together in some capacity at, at some point. You know, I was thinking I actually went back and played that festival this year. And I hadn't been uh, back since the, the first year. And um, cool. I was sort of thinking about that because it's 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 a different well it's a really wonderful festival first of all they just have a really great time really wonderful uh, audience members who are so happy and it's a different setup than the Austin Chamber Music Festival and I know that you guys play festivals all the time and you have these yeah. you have some festivals where lots of different artists come in and it's sort of um, you put together music we call it festival style, right? Because you're putting together like four or six concerts in a weekend, putting it together right. in four or five days. People are playing together with people that they've never played together with before. But it has this really kind of wonderful feel of it too because you're just, yeah. you're, you're doing nothing but like eating, sleeping, and drinking the music. But then you eat, sleep, and drink together. Well, you might not sleep together. Hopefully you're not sleeping together. But right. you're but you're like... But you're all having, in the same place. You're all in the same town, which yeah. is actually... I mean, you are sleeping in the same place, you know, which is different from a lot of times where, where you know, uh, we just don't get to see other people very much, other musicians. We're, we're, we show up on our own to something and, and you know, yeah. and that's it. So it is, it is different. Yeah. Yeah. So there's something nice about that feel. And then with, with our festival that we do in the summertime, it's a big presenting festival. So it's a festival really, really... Um, maybe even more for the audience than it is for the musicians themselves. I mean, all the groups that come in, they love playing together, but they're not necessarily getting a feel of the other musicians. But it's such a huge festival to be able to bring in all these great groups, and, and that creates a real excitement, I think, in the city, too. Yeah, well, and, and, and you know, I, the, our summer gets so crazy with all the different stuff going on that it's just wonderful we can, we can come in and be a part of this. We're thrilled. Um, Austin is one of our favorite cities. We, we were... Uh, um, I did my undergrad at Rice University in Houston, uh -huh. so I would go up to Austin all the time. And um, just this past year, we were we were uh, doing a master class up at UT. Right. Um, but we really wanted to be able to actually connect with the audience in Austin, and we're really really excited about it. So this yeah. is great. Yeah, I'm really excited to have you guys too. And I think what's cool about having you guys here too is that you do so many different things as a string quartet. You know, you have some string quartets who have very <laughs> traditional kind of paths in their um in their trajectory but you guys have really kind of taken yourselves out of the box uh, too to do different things and I, what i wanted to talk a little bit about was the way you play different venues and what i'm curious about is when you're playing like for instance clubs how do you choose your repertoire and what kind of things do you bring into the club and what kind of um what kind of uh, feedback do you get from audiences in that setting and then coercely how do you take the club into the concert hall because I'm sure that that happens and that becomes influential in everything you do. Yeah, well, um, I'm, it's a it's a really interesting um, uh, thing we discovered when we started doing this. We were it was about it was about five or six years ago that we sort of started to say, you know, um, we love playing this music and it's great, and we love playing concert halls and we love playing for you know chamber music 
you know, audiences. Um, but there's a lot more people that we think would like this music and how can we reach them? And, um, that's when we started doing, um, these, uh, we came up with that tagline chamber music in a new chamber mm -hmm. and we started playing in, uh, in clubs and it was, um, really not, there are actually, you know, a lot of people doing this now, which we're really thrilled about. Um, but when we started, there were not very, I think we might've been the first chamber group, at least in, in recent history to do this. Um, certainly new music groups have done stuff like this, you know, for premieres of more, you know, more recent repertoire. And, um, there's a cellist, Matt Heimovitz that we were really influenced by because he was doing this. Um, he was, you know, bringing Bach cello suites, um, Bach, bring Bach, who was it? Bach to the bar. That was his, mm -hmm. his, his mm -hmm. motto. Um, but I think, um, I think we just thought like, let's say you take away, you know, feeling like you have to dress up a certain way, take away expensive tickets, take away, um, you know, the maybe um, stiffness of how you're going to applaud, you know, when you're going to clap, and are you going to are you going to mess that up, and mm -hmm. people are going to look at you funny, and um, and and take away, uh, I don't know, just not being able to have a drink maybe if you want to during the show. I mean, a lot of times, a lot of people when they hear music, they're they're in a relaxed environment, they can have a drink if they want, and they enjoy that. That's fun. <laughs> Why? What's wrong with that? So. Right. Um, so we just thought it'd be really cool to try not, I mean, not thinking about this as like some kind of half fast concert. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah, you can say oh, that. I, was, I, said, <laughs> I just used a, a swear, a swear word. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but, but, um, to me. Um, I don't know if it's going on, you know, national television. Or something. No. Um, yeah, we didn't want to think of it as like a half fast concert where we were going to just, you know, play a couple of things. We want to be real and, and as much of a real concert for us and, and hopefully for the audience as in a concert hall. And that was our goal. Um, but we did change the way we did it. We, we, um, we, and do, we take, um, if we're playing in a club, we'll take, um, usually we'll take some of the repertoire that we're working on. And that's usually a mix of, of, um, newer pieces, um, you know, more recently written or even written for us. And then, um, the standard repertoire of the string quartet world. I mean, Beethoven and Haydn and Brahms and Bartok and all those people. Um, and we will create like a set list. The first, usually the first set will be like, you know, movements at a time, kind of really, um, uh, eclectic and, you know, mixed up and, you know, the, the kind of, I don't know, iPod shuffle approach. Uh -huh. And so we'll do that. And, um, you know, people applaud whenever they want. Um, usually it's only once we finish playing, but it's definitely not waiting for a whole piece to be over. Um, but you know, we're, we always say, to be like, Oh my gosh, just, you can clap whenever you feel like it. <laughs> you know, not that we're like trying to get extra, you know, right. give us more applause. <laughs> um, but I think it really makes people feel at ease, especially people who don't, who haven't come to classical concerts to think about, you know, um, and, and, and I think too, uh, historically, the move towards not clapping between movements really came late 19th century mm -hmm. um, with Mahler and Wagner and, you know, setting these huge pieces of art. Um, the notion that a Mozart string quartet that you wouldn't have clapped between movements would have been absurd to Mozart. So the idea, too, that we're somehow, like, destroying the classical music tradition by, you know, proposing that right. is not based well, in... Even in... Know, even Ellie. in Mozart's time, you know, they wouldn't have done necessarily a whole string quartet in a concert. They'd do an aria, and then they would do a movement from a piano sonata, and then maybe a movement from right. a string quartet, and then maybe a move from, movement from a symphony. And so they were yep. a lot more sort of eclectic potpourris, and I think they were a lot yep. more in that sort of style of, like, celebration and people having a good time in the concert yeah. hall. 